In this Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a planar butt joint that you can use in laser cutting or other CNC processes in case you have a piece that won't fit on your machine or you want to use some scrap material and then assemble the piece later. This can also help if you're trying to lay out curvilinear components or circles because they take up a lot of space in material and if you break them up into littler pieces, then you can fit more in your nesting and arrange them onto your material and be more efficient. So for example, here I have a curvilinear piece that is 225 millimeters long, but I can only fit a 200 millimeter piece onto my machine. How can I make it so I can use this piece in this configuration? I could just make a slice right through the middle of it, but that would be hard to align. A better way is to make something that automatically keys in place. That way I know that the fit and the alignment is correct. There are many ways to do that. We could use a geometric key, or probably a better way is to use an organic key. This way we don't have to worry about any inside corners and it'll look a little bit more elegant. So let's get started. First, I wanna go ahead and activate the component in Fusion 360. I labeled this component long because it's too long for my machine. And then I click this little circle to activate it. Now I'm only working on that component. To modify a component or to do anything in Fusion 360, generally we want to draw a sketch. So I'll click Create Sketch and then click this face. Go ahead and grab the circle. And this can be anywhere depending on your design. I might think that right here might be a good point because it's at the top of this arch. So I'm just going to draw a circle here and I'm going to type in 20 to get the diameter of that circle. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw a line by pressing L and I'm going to make this a construction line. And I'm going to draw straight down to this point and then I'm going to draw straight up. Then I can click the equal constraint and click both of these lines and then they're equal. So now both of these lines are equal. Sometimes Fusion 360 picks a poor color choice for component colors. So for example, this pink is actually pretty hard to see. So if that ever happens to you, right click on the component and then cycle component color. That's also equally bad because the blue doesn't show up very well. And then I can click cycle component color again, and this can be better. If you still can't see anything, you can always turn off inspect display component colors, and then it goes back to its normal view. It's hard to say which one is better, but depending on what you're working on, make sure you're able to do that. I'm gonna go back to the sketch and click Edit Sketch. So now I have this circle, but that doesn't really help me make a joint. The next thing I might wanna do is create a spline. So I could draw a spline from here to here, and then click Check. And then if I make this tangent with this line, and I make a tangent with this line, that'll automatically make this smooth curve. It may be better though to have just a little bit of straightness right at the top. Instead of having that spline go tangent directly to there, I can draw an L straight from the top here, give it some dimension, let's say three, make sure that it's 100% vertical by clicking the vertical constraint. And then I can click the spline and I can click from this point now to this point, click the check mark. Then I can make both of them tangent. So I can make this one tangent to this line and then this one tangent to the circle. I'll click the dimensions and I'll grab this dot and this point, make it go over, let's say six. So now that is perfectly curvilinear and it'll lock in and the laser cutter can go right along this line. The next thing I wanna do is make a mirror line. So I can draw a center line right here. So I'm gonna click the center line constraint, press L, center line, draw from here straight over. You can use any line, but this makes it look like a center line so you can remember what it is. Then with my sketch, I can create a mirror. So I click the mirror and ask me what objects I wanna mirror. I'm gonna click this line and this line. Then the mirror line, it'll automatically select this line and I press OK. The last thing I need to do is just tell how far over this circle is. So we didn't determine exactly where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and press D and then click all the way over to the edge here, push straight up and I'll say 70 millimeters. That should fully constrain our sketch. Let's go ahead and check. It is not quite fully constrained. So, oh, the spline. So yes, yeah, so to fully constrain a spline, 
we need to define the length of this because if I still move this, you see how the curve changes. So one thing I can do is I can just press D, give this a length, let's say three, it'll be a nice length. And then all the other ones, I can just use the equal constraint. So I can click this one to here. Then once those are equal, that fully constrains the spline and then the other one is mirrored. So it's constrained as well. We'll go ahead and finish the sketch. Now, how do I change this part into two? Well, there's a couple different ways. We could go ahead and make a whole new part, or we could split this into two bodies and then make components. I think what I'm gonna do is modify this component and then create a new component. So first, I'll just press E to extrude, and then I'll select these two pieces, and then I'll go negative three. That's because I know the distance, but what if your distance of plywood changes? What I wanna do is instead of going to the extent type, I can go to object, and then I can come over here and click the other side of the object. That way, if I ever change the distance, it will update automatically. So now that one is now missing and I have this joint that I can join up later. Then I'm gonna go up to the top level component, create a new component, and I'm gonna call it second piece. Then I can create a sketch and I can create it right on this face of this piece. And then I need to show the sketch again because in Fusion 360, it automatically hides sketches. And then I see it right here, so I can press E right away, just grab these pieces. And then once again, because I might change my dimension, I could either use my user parameter of ply or thickness, or I could have the extent type go to object, and I can click this side of the object and press OK. Now if I go to the top level component, I can inspect display component colors, hide this sketch, and now I have this nice fit a joint here that's planar. It's a butt joint, so it will require glue to keep it aligned, but that way I can have a nice decorative joint that allows my pieces to fit onto the machine. So this is a great way to save space and to create interesting joints with your laser cutter. Happy 3D modeling.